morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Apostle Jimmy Jummer, founder of Jesus Delivery International Ministry and JDI Networks. And I welcome you to our broadcast this morning. This is, uh, today is May the 3rd, 2020. And we are here to uh, speak what God has given me, the blood of Jesus. This is the first Sunday of May, and uh, a lot of people are going back into their sanctuaries today because it's uh, they're doing what they call the rebound uh, from the coronavirus to get us back into what was normal. Nothing will be normal anymore because of this particular disease. And it's a way of bringing us all together for Christ's sake. That's what I feel. Um, but today, God has given me the blood of Jesus. It was very difficult for me to uh, get myself together and... Uh, if it's difficult for you, this message is definite for you. I want to uh, get into our different uh, readings for the day, and then we'll jump into the message, The Blood of Jesus. But I'm going to need a lot of help this morning because of the way things are going on. And evidently, something great is getting ready to happen. Because I've been dealing with warfare this morning. So bear with me and let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus, I know you are on the right hand of the Father interceding. I need my angels dispatched right now from the heavenly realm. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. I ask you to help me to speak the oracles of heaven. I ask you to have the things that are in the way to be moved right now. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you are getting ready to help me with this morning. Lead. God, speak through me right now in Jesus' most mighty name. Amen to the Father, amen to the Son, and amen to the Holy Ghost. We usually read our daily confession, but right now I want to read Psalms 91. And I'm reading this from the King James Version. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snails of the fowl and from the noisy pestilence. He shall cover thee with, the, with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thou shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fled by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come now thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come over thy dwelling. 
for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash their foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion, and at it the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call up on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I uh, satisfy him and show him my salvation. That was Psalms 91. Now we are going into Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. We are dealing with warfare this morning, and these are the scriptures that you will want to use when you are dealing with warfare. Um, it's a lot of things happen in the spiritual realm, and I need the Word of God to fight for me this morning. So, Ephesians 6, we start with the 10th verse, and this is in the King James Version. Family, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against power, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, there unto you, the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your lawns grip about with truth and on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet show with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery docks of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all preservation and supplication for all saints. And that is 18. I'm going to go down to 20. Praying and 19. And for me that utterly may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am a, I am an a, an a, a ambassador in bolds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let me read twenty again. For which I am an a, an abas an an a, am an ambassador whoo, in bold that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Sometimes words do not come out like plan. But read verse 20 is an, an ambassador to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what God say we are. I'm going to read the daily confession and one um uh, 
and one uh, uh, and one line of the uh, Tabernacle Prayer. And the Spirit of the Lord, the uh, daily confession, comes from Isaiah 11 and 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The short tabernacle prayer, we're going to read uh, one paragraph. And it's releasing the awesome power of God. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, repenting of all of our sin. We repent for, for sins known and unknown. Sins of word, thought, and deed, and also secret thoughts. Cleansing us according to 1 John 1 and 9, your word states, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. Exalting the name of Jesus which is above every name. We declare that Jesus is Lord over this day. I thank you, Lord, for what you are getting ready to do for the blood of Jesus. Help me to speak the oracles of heaven. Help me to help the people to see and know what you want them to know about the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' most mighty name, amen to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As I said earlier, today is May the 3rd, 2020, the first Sunday of May. We will be taking communion on today. So, um, if you do not know anything about communion, I will uh, go into 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 34. Um, while I read the short tabernacle prayer, releasing the awesome God, power of God, is to help you to understand that you need to repent for your sins in order to take the communion. But this is not where we're going right now. I just want you to be prepared. Uh, you can stop this video or pause it wherever you are. If you're looking at us on, um, on YouTube, just pause it. Go and get wine or grape juice or pomegranate juice, whatever you have, and bread or crackers. Go and get that, and at the end of this message about the blood of Jesus, then we will take communion. Our uh, message is coming from Hebrew 8. Hebrew chapter 8. The book of Hebrews chapter 8. And... This is talking about um, Jesus after his resurrection, um, the covenant in which God gave us. So we're going to start in verse 8. I'm still in the King James Version for today. Um, Hebrew chapter 8. Verse 8, and we're going down to verse 13. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said it the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not, order, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers 
in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant. I regarded them not, said the Lord. So this is uh, God talking about the first covenant that he gave Moses. When Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt into the promised land, God gave him a covenant. So this is what we're talking about, the first covenant. And of course our message is the blood of Jesus. Now how does this come together? That was the old and Jesus is in the New Testament. So we're going to get into that as we go along. Verse 10, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel at the, the, those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So now, after Jesus died on the cross, he shed his blood for us, and that's what we're getting into communion today. Uh, after he did everything that he did, he rose on the third day, uh, he, he's ascended into heaven, he's on the right hand of the Father. This is what we're living now, is the second covenant. And that covenant is... It's in our minds, it's in our hearts, and we won't, we won't deny, we, we'll know that this is God speaking. Uh, if you go back in, I think it's Matthew's, one of the four Gospels, um, might have been Luke or John. Um, Matthew's, Mark, Luke, and John are the four Gospels. If you go back into the four gospel, you will see how Jesus talked about, I think in the book of John, uh, chapter 10, I do believe. You will see what Jesus talked about, uh, how his sheep know his voice, and a stranger they will not uh, follow. This is how the second covenant comes. So you would know without a shadow of a doubt. If this is God speaking to you, because like he says here, he's placed it into our minds. He's placed it into our hearts, his voice. We will know that it's him. Uh, verse 11, it says, and they shall not teach each man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, for the least to the greatest. 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In the, and that he said a new covenant he has made the first old, now that which decayed and waxed old is ready to vanish. So the old covenant that God gave, uh, it talked, and we're going to get into that in verse 9. I don't want to go too far ahead of myself, but it talks about. Uh, what they had to do, they had to sacrifice uh, the sheep and uh, uh, not the sheep, but the uh, the lamb. They had to sacrifice the lamb, the blood. They put the blood on the on, on the doorpost. So when a death angel came by, they passed by him uh, because these were God's people and do not touch the blood of Jesus. Uh, now. That's the old covenant. The new covenant is Jesus, uh, and they did that every year. They sacrificed the, the blood and went into um, the Holy of Holies and 
uh, and all of that. Like I said, I don't want to go too far. But they, they did sacrificial offering. The priest did it uh, every year. But when Jesus shed his blood on the cross for us, that was a one-time sacrifice. So now, after that one-time sacrifice, then it had to be a new covenant. So that's what we're dealing with right now. It's the new covenant. And next, we're going to go into Hebrews 9. And I'm going from verse 1 through 15, and then we're going to jump down to verses 24 through 26. Verse uh, 1 at Hebrew 9. Then verily the first covenant, this is what I was speaking of, and I want you to see it in the word of God. The, 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 then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service in a worldly uh, sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all. Now these are the where where the sanctuary is where the people are. And then we go on into the holiness, the tabernacle is the priest is moving in. The priest is also in the tabernacle, but this is what the old covenant was. Number four, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about which gold wherein was the golden pot that had mamma and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables and the covenant of the covenant. Verse 5, and over it the cherubim of glory shattering the mercy seat, which we cannot now speak partially. Now, that, now when these things were thus ordered, ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, uh, accomplishing the service of God. Number seven, but into the second went the high priest along once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So you see, this is the first covenant. And it was a priest, then it was a high priest, and then we're going to get on down to the next verse. Uh, the high priest uh, was there once a year to uh, repent for the people's sin. I'm going to read number six again. Now, when these things were... Uh, Thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, uh, accomplishing the service of God. And then seven, but into the second went the high priest, along once every year, not without blood, which is offered for himself and for the errors of the people. Number eight, the Holy Ghost. This signifies that the way unto the holiness of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Number nine, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifice that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. 
Number 10, which stood only in meals and drinks and de devised washing and carnal ordinance imposed on, on them until the time of reform. But Christ being come and out and but Christ being come and and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Christ, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, went in the holy of holy, the tabernacle, for our sins that one time. Because in the old covenant, the high priest went in once a year. But in the new covenant, Jesus sacrificed his life, his blood for our sins. Number 13, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkle the unclean sacrificed to the to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God pure purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I want to read that again. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, hey, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. This is what Christ did for you. How much more do you need to know the blood of Jesus that was shed for your sins? From your dead works to live, live your life for God. For the living God, not these idol gods, but for the living God, Jesus Christ shed his blood for you. Number 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, wouldn't you want eternal life? That's what Jesus shed his blood for you. Verse 24, we're going to wrap this thing up. Woohoo! My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figure of the truth, but into heaven himself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Jesus is in the presence of God. He's your mediator. That's when you, uh, when you pray. You pray in the name of Jesus because he is the mediator for you. He shed his blood on the cross for you. He's, he rose on the third day. He's on the right hand of the Father interceding just 
for you. And 26, for then must he offer, often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sac by sacrificing himself. So that's what we want to talk about today is the sacrifice of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, how he sacrificed himself just for you, how he died on the cross, how he rose on the third day and he sacrificed his life for you. And when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus because he's a media, he's a mediator. He's a inter, he's interceding right now on the right hand of the father just for you. Father God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you for helping me with this message. I help you for the blood of Jesus. That's what this message is about. I ask you to help the people to have an ear to hear what the scripture is saying. I ask you to help me with the communion because the communion is the blood of Jesus. He shed his blood for us and every time we take the this communion is in remembrance of him. So I ask you right now for the people to get their uh, condiments together, their wine together, their uh, their uh, juice together, pomegranate juice, grape juice, uh, their crackers together, their bread together, th whatever they have that represent the body of Jesus, which is the crackers of the bread, whatever they have, the wine or the juice to represent the blood of Jesus. I ask you to help them to get it together. Pause this if they need to pause it. If they're ready, they're ready. And we are getting going there right now for the blood of Jesus. I am going right now in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to start off reading uh, verse 26, I do believe. Let's see if that's the right one. Yes, uh, because what this does, we're going to read that first. Let's unveil the crackers here. And the wine. If you have any sickness in your body, we're going to ask God to take care of it right now in the mighty name of Jesus with the condiments, with the wine, and with the, uh, with the crackers here and the wine. I ask Jesus to uh, heal your body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we are asking the Heavenly Father to search our hearts, our mind, and our spirit. Remove any and everything out of the way that make us unworthy to take these condiments. To uh, take the wine for the blood and for the crackers. I have crackers here for his body that was beaten to heal our body right now in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm doing this because I'm having problems with my ears right now. So I'm asking the blood of Jesus to cover me right now. I'm asking for a healing on my body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 26 of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, it starts as follows. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthy, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. So, Heavenly Father, we ask in you to look into our bodies, look into our minds, look into our spirits. Make us worthy to take this bread that represents your body and drink this cup that represent your blood. Going back to verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we take this bread. We thank the Lord for his body. We break it. And we eat. And after the same matter, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as all as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the wine. This is the blood of Jesus. This represents the blood of Jesus. As we talked about today, how much more do we need for this sacrifice of Jesus Christ? Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. And we do this in remembrance of you. Drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. I ask you to continue on blessing your people, healing your people, letting them know that you sacrificed your life for them. You came here as a baby. You left your throne. You came here. You grew up and you sacrificed your life. You rose on the third day. And now you are sitting on the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And this message. I thank you. This is Apostle Jimmy Jumra, founder of of Jesus Delivery International Ministry and JDI Networks. I thank you for worshiping and uh, listening and hearing and taking communion here on this broadcast this morning. I love you and I ask you to continue on watching us on our live stream on JDI Networks on Roku TV and on our YouTube channel. Have a wonderful and blessed day.